Um, so our last speaker today is Maria Julia Redondo from Universidad Nacional del Sur, uh, who's talking to speak about the X algebra for infinitesimal deformations. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Karin, Juan, and Sibyl for, for this invitation, for giving a flash talk here. And uh, thank you very much for this uh, nice and, and well-organized meeting. Um, this is a joint work with uh, Lucrezia Roman and Fiorella Rossi Bertoni. And all the things I'm going to mention today, you can find them in our preprint in, in archive. So the setting is the following. We start with a, a finite dimensional K algebra uh, with a product new. We consider the algebra of dual numbers and we consider the, the R model, which can be constructed by tensoring A with uh, the, the dual numbers. So what is an infinitesimal deformation? We start with a K algebra structure on A and we want to define R algebra structure on this R model, but not any uh, R algebra structure. We want this structure to be associative and uh, we want it to coincide with the original uh, product if we cons consider things modulo epsilon. So we want to define a associative R algebra structures in this R module that extends our original product new. So uh, it is clear that uh, this R module is isomorphic uh, to A plus A epsilon. And if we want to define an arch algebra structure, we just have to define what is A star B for any pair of elements in A. Uh, this should be uh, something in this direct sum, direct sum, but we also want the star to be uh, equivalent to mu modulo epsilon. So the, the equation we get for the star is just, it has to be mu of A tensor B plus, some f, where f is a, a k linear map from a tensor a to a. As uh, Van said in the, in the previous talk, we want this to be associative. So if you write the equation for a, b, and c to get associativity for this uh, star product, you get this equation, which is exactly the same as saying that f is a Hochschild two cosine. So from now on, I'm going to denote a f, the infinitesimal deformation associated to the Hochschild two cycle F, where the, the, the product mu, which extends uh, the product star, which extends mu, it's just mu plus F epsilon, and F is a Hochschild two cycle. So as the, the title says, uh, we want to study the X algebra for infinitesimal deformation. Remember that the X algebra of an A module M is the direct sum of the I extensions from M to M with the product given by Schneider product. And in particular, the X algebra of an algebra A, which I'm going to denote by E of A, is uh, the X algebra associated to the A module A, which is A portion by the radical of A. Why are we interested in studying X algebras? Because it is well known that if A is a Kosul algebra, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the algebra A and its X algebra E of A. This is not true in general, but uh, Keller proved in 2000 that if you think of, about the A infinity algebra of the X algebra of A, this is sufficient to recover A. And due to a result of Kaidesvili, we know that the, the X algebra of A admits an A infinity algebra structure because it is the cohomology of a differential graded algebra. Okay, so the, the, the aim of our uh, joint work was to study the connection between the X algebra of the, the form algebra AF with respect to the X algebra of the original algebra A. And we want you to study this connection as graded vector spaces, as algebras, and also as A infinity algebras. We succeeded in the first two cases, but up to now we have no nice results about the connection between these two as A infinity algebras. 
So if we want to, to describe the X algebra, we need to construct a projective resolution. So we started by trying to understand what was the connection between AF modules in terms of A modules. And we found a nice result that says that any uh, X, uh, which is an AF module, uh, is in one-to-one -one correspondence with a pair of A modules, a monomorphism, an A monomorphism between them, and a K-linear map from A tensor M to N that satisfies the two cycle condition. That means if you have three elements, A, B, and M, then this K-linear map satisfies this condition that you can recognize is exactly the same as what we said about the Hochschild two cycle condition. Now we have two immediate corollaries due to this theorem. The first one says that mod A is a full subcategory of mod AF. That means any A module M can be put in one-to-one -one correspondence with the same uh, space M considered as an AF module. And in particular, the, the simple S as an AF module is in one-to-one -one correspondence with the simple S as an A module. And a second corollary, which is important for what we are trying to do, is that we can describe easily projective AF modules. If you consider the algebra as an AF module, you, you use this connection and you see that it is connected with A as an A module. And if you write it as a direct sum of in the composable objects, here you will find the uh, projective uh, in the composable A module. So this says that, again, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, projective AF modules and projective A modules. And I'm going to denote by this hat, this uh, correspondence. OK, so now that we, we have a nice description of uh, modules and projective modules between these two algebras, we started making a lot of examples to see how can we construct projective resolutions of M as an A module uh, or as an AF module using its projective resolution as an A module. So if you have M and you construct a minimal projective resolution of this module as an A module, we found in all the examples that uh, the projective resolution as an AF module will have in, in each degree, the projective, the same projective uh, that appears in the original uh, resolution, plus some of the projectives that appear in the previous cases. But here you see, we have the QI hat, where I belongs to this set, which is a subset of the previous degrees. We could not find uh, a condition uh, in order to determine which projectives are appearing here. But we, we succeeded in finding conditions in the extreme spaces, in the extreme cases. I mean, case A is where none of these appear. So we, we want to study the case where all these uh, subsets are the empty sets. And the other extreme case is where all these projectives appear. So these uh, subsets are equal to all the previous degrees. And we uh, succeeded in finding condition star A or star B that says that if you start with a minimal projective resolution of M as an A module, you can construct a minimal projective resolution of M as an AF module by putting just the, the projective hat of in the same degree or putting the sum of all the, the previous projectives. The conditions star A and star B are uh, given in terms of the morphisms between the projective modules that you have in the, in the resolution and some uh, K linear maps that are defined in terms of this delta and the Hochschild Truco cycle. And condition star A is, is really very surprising because it just says that the composition of delta two, the K linear map uh, associated to delta one and delta zero, it has to be zero. So it just says what is happening in the, in the very beginning of the, of the projective resolution. Condition star B is a bit more complicated it says that this composition must be a monomorphism and all the even spaces should be the direct sum of these two things as vector spaces. But now we, we can describe the X from M to N as AF modules in terms of X of M to N as A modules 
when we are in condition A, they are just isomorphic. And when they are, um, we are in condition B, the, you have to tensor them with the polynomial ring in one variable. As an immediate corollary of this theorem, we, uh, we can say what is the connection between the X algebra of the, the form algebra A and the X algebra of A as K vector spaces. In condition I, they are isomorphic. In condition B, you have to tensor it with the polynomial ring in one variable. And finally, what can we say about the algebra structure of these two? Well, again, in condition A, they are isomorphic. And if you take two elements of a degree I and J, and you multiply them in the extulture of the deform, I mean, with this star, then you will get zero if I and J are odd, or you will get exactly the original product uh, otherwise. In condition B, it's a bit more complicated since the algebra is isomorphic to E of A tensor the polynomial ring. So the elements of degree N here are elements of degree here in, in one summon of this. So if you take a, an element of degree N and you multiply it with an element of degree M, you will get what we expect, I mean, this is just as if this isomorphism was of algebras, but you get a lot of other summons where these are, again, the K linear maps are appearing. And finally, we found conditions in order to get the vanishing of all these last summons that says if all these K linear maps, their image is contained in the radical of the projectives, then the isomorphism between the X, these X actual bars is uh, as algebra. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Maria.